this is our energy unit. And so we're going to start off with concept one notes about the nature of energy. So first, we should probably know what energy is. It is the ability to cause change, and it is measured in joules. One joule is one kilogram times a meter per second squared, um, which isn't probably meaning anything to you, so just know that it's measured in joules. And there are so many different types of energy. So we're going to learn about all sorts of different types of energy in this unit, different ways that we can cause change. But first, we're going to start by the kind of the two biggies, which are kinetic and potential energy. So first, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, or Ke, is energy in motion. So any object that is moving has kinetic energy. We can calculate it. Kinetic energy is one-half mass times velocity squared. Mass always must be measured in kilograms in this equation, and velocity must always be measured in meters per second. So let's do an example. A jogger with a mass of 60 kilograms is moving at a speed of 3 meters per second. What is a jogger's kinetic energy? Well, we are looking for kinetic energy. We know that the mass of the jogger is 60 kilograms and that he has a speed or velocity, we could say, because numerically they are the same, of 3 meters per second. Our equation for kinetic energy is Ke equals 1 half mv squared. And what I'm looking for is already isolated, so I can go ahead and solve. So when I plug in, that's Ke equals 1 half, the mass, which is 60, times the velocity, which is 3, squared. So half of 60 is 30, and then 3 squared is 9. So we're down to 30 times 9, which is 270. And our unit for any type of energy is joules. Now, here are three practice problems. The first one should be no big deal at all. The second two are more challenging, especially for my non-honor students, because you're going to be rearranging the equation to find mass and velocity. Um, but I still want you to do these. These would be great bonus questions for non-honors, definitely required questions for honors. Um, and a little hint, remember when we're rearranging equations, if there's some sort of fraction, the first thing you should always do is get it out of a fraction, and we do that by multiplying by the denominator. So use that little tip, solve these, and then you can and make sure you pause, and then you can click um, play and see all the answers. Okay, the other main type of energy is potential energy, and this is stored energy. So this man on the edge of this cliff, if he's not moving, he has stored energy. Three types of potential energy are elastic, chemical, and gravitational. So, elastic potential. This is energy stored in objects that are being compressed or stretched. If you've ever pulled um, a slingshot like this, it's really, really tight. You can almost feel that energy all stored that wants to be released when you let go. Um, bow and arrows work the same way, and springs like slinkies do the exact same thing. Chemical potential energy is energy stored in chemical bonds of compounds. And we'll talk about this more um, in later units um, when we get to like bonding and chemical reactions. But mainly we're going to talk about this a ton in biology. Um, that'll be something we really, really hit. So what we mean by that is firewood. Um, when it burns, it's releasing chemical potential energy. Um, batteries have chemical energy in them. Food, any food you eat, anything that's made of chemical compounds has chemical potential energy in it. And then the one that we're going to spend the most time on is gravitational potential energy. This is abbreviated as GPE, and it's energy stored in objects that are above Earth's surface. So even in this, um, in this Newton's cradle, how this is being held upward, it is being held above this Earth's surface, and so it has potential energy. We can calculate it. GPE equals ham. H is your height, and it's always measured in meters. A is your acceleration due to gravity, because this is gravitational potential energy, which is in meters per second square, meter per second squared, and that's 9.8 always when we're calculating GPE for objects on Earth. And then M is mass, and it's measured in kilograms. So at the peak of its path, this sphere right here, 
pauses for just a second and it has gravitational potential energy. Or if I was holding it up here like so, it would have gravitational potential energy. When I drop it, that energy, that stored energy gets converted to kinetic energy because it's in motion. When it hits these other spheres, it can transfer that energy. And we're going to get into that a lot more in future concepts in this unit. Let's do an example of GPE calculations first though. How much gravitational potential energy does a five kilogram rock have if it is sitting on the edge of a cliff that is 10 meters high? Okay, what are we looking for? We're looking for GPE. What do we know? Five kilograms is a mass. We know that 10 meters is a height. And then we know the acceleration due to gravity is always gonna be 9.8 meters per second squared for all of the purposes that we will use. Our equation for finding gravitational potential energy is GPE equals ham. Because what I'm looking for is already isolated, I can go ahead and plug in and solve. So GPE equals ham, that's my height of 10 times acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 times the mass of five. You can just multiply across and you should get 490 joules. Now, here are um, three practice problems that you should be able to do, um, non-honors or um, honors alike. Note for the third one, I gave you a weight. So think back to our last unit um, where, remember, weight is a force, and force equals your mass times your acceleration. So think about that as you work through this problem, and make sure you pause this as you try to solve, and then you can check back for the answers. And we'll, of course, go over these in detail in class. All right, now we're going to practice.